Travel. Welcome. This is Ariana Cap. Today, I want to talk a little bit about hammer-ons and pull-offs. That's a huge field, so I'm not going to be able to pull it off, pun intended, in one session. But a few ideas and a couple of exercises. Those exercises will strengthen your left hand. They will add variety to your groove and tone because a hammered-on note sounds different than a plucked note, right? So the idea of a hammer-on is something is ringing and the left hand on the heel of that ringing adds a note, okay? Now here's an exercise for you. This is all happening just with the left hand except for the first note. I'm plucking a note and then I'm leaving it alone and just going with my left hand, okay? That's basically hammering on each, each individual finger. Now you want to be able to do that um, and make sure that you get a nice tone. Move down into the lower frets once you're comfortable around the fifth air, fifth fret area because down there they're a little bit harder just because of the angle. And then you, you know you can do that in different strings and so forth. And if you practice them like this, you know, you're really getting each giving each finger a pretty good workout. But as always, I would then do, do something musical with it. So you can, for example, hammer on a minor pentatonic scale. I want to make sure you see my right hands here. So that's always my left hand hammering on these other notes. And, and then you can just jam with it. Now the pattern that I was using here is one of the five pentatonic shapes. So one four, one three, one three, and then one three once more if you want to expand the pattern. Um, that's the G minor pentatonic in this position. If your note doesn't speak, give it a little bit more oomph. Okay, but it should be audible be able to hear it and um, so now we've done hammer-ons how about we do a couple of pull-offs pull-offs are basically the opposite of hammer-ons so we have a note that's ringing and then I am pulling off into the next note um, and I'm creating this note by basically plucking my string into this fretted finger here and just as we did the hammer-ons earlier, you can just, you know, pull off, pull off. And I think you can also pull off into the open string. Here are a couple of exercises, so you can, you know, doesn't matter which notes, basically, you just want to do it one per, one finger per fret. So I'm hammering on and pulling off. Of course, you can do that with permutation exercises. You know, you come up with a variation of four numbers. Two, one, three, four. Two, one, three, four. So I'm always pulling off in this exercise. I'm always pulling off into the open string. Make sure that the pull-off movement happens down towards the floor. You don't want to be pulling out of the base. You want to be pulling down because that sideways motion away from the fretboard like that really gives you the best angle to sound. Give it good sound. So with these, what you want to practice is to make them speak because they sometimes may sound, could sound a little bit swallowed. So the, and the goal, of course, is that the hammer-on and the pull-off are the same loudness, or roughly the same. So that's a good exercise. And then, of course, you can combine them in all sorts of ways. So now I would be doing two, one, three, one, four, one, two, one, 
three, one, four, one. Do that a couple times. Then instead of pulling it into the first finger, you can pull them into the second finger. Only gives you two variation. Three, two, four, two, three, two, four, two. They want to sound a little weaker. These fingers are weaker, okay? So we need to give them good workout. And then of course, just the pinky. Now I'm going to use that in a musical context and I'm going to use again my G minor pentatonic shape. By the way, I call this one the upside down boot because it's like a looks like a boot, the sole of the boot and the shaft. <laughs> um, but here we go. So you can go, you know, do things like this. Uh, with these kind of uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs right away. Today's tip, it's a good one on the heel of um, hammer-ons. When you play any note, first finger is straightforward, right? Second finger, you could play it like, like this, right? But why bother putting this finger away? Because it makes no difference whether it's there or not. Right? Sound-wise, it makes no difference. But it actually helps you push down that note. So I recommend... If I play the second finger, I'm going to put the first one down as well. How about the third finger? Same thing. I'm not going to bother putting these fingers up. It really puts a lot of strain on my hand. I can feel it all the way down my arm. So I want these to be there. Just support. How about pinky finger? Same thing. I don't want these two gone. I don't want you know these sticking out. It's extra work. And then when I bring them back, I need to account for this split millisecond or whatever that it takes to bring my fingers back in so i want to stay as connected with the fretboard as i possibly can signing off for today ariana cap thank you so much for watching if you're interested in more exercises for hammer-ons and pull-offs there is an extensive collection of um, exercises and practices in my book music theory for the bass player in the technique section so if you're interested there it is thank you